Hey, Mo, we need to get an intro down for this channel, you know. Yeah, but what are you thinking, Lee? Why don't I rap over the top of it? Don't be ridiculous. You sound like a northern M&M. Look, listen to me. Yo, yo, yo. The munch brunch in the hoose, man. Absolutely not. Right, what you got in mind? Let's just keep it simple. I'm Lee. I'm Aim. They wear the munch. Hi everyone and welcome back to another Bang with Aim and Lee. We are the Munch Bunch UK. Lee, tell them, what do we have on the menu? We have a Monday roast. Aim is a roast pork dinner on a yeah. Monday, not a Sunday. Sue was. I don't care. Nice. I'm not paying you anyway. We did have a Chinese yesterday, didn't we? We didn't film it. We can have a Chinese without filming Lee. We had a cheeky Chinese, which we're all that. I loved it. Oh, it she always me does. Bad, though. It's funny. Yeah, um, it's not funny in a good way. It's like the MSG or whatever the hell you call it. Is it it's, MSG or that's Madison yeah. Square Garden? No, MSG is in that Chinese. All oh, right. But on here, Lee's got a little bit different to me. I have Lee's favourite vegetable, Brussels sprouts. You couldn't control yourself, could you? You know what happened then? I actually put them on my plate by mistake. And I was like, what? I actually got angry with myself. I was like, what the hell? Get the hell off my plate now. And I flung him across the room. <laughs> you got sprouts, pork, rice potatoes, bull potatoes, cabbage, carrots, Yorkshire puddings. And the pork and is Lee's lovely got sweet today. Corn. Yeah, sweet corn peas. Andrew got some sweet corn. I think some peas on there. Cabbage, carrots, mm. rouse, which didn't rouse as well. Didn't really brown as much as I wanted them to. Yorkshire puddings, shop bought, not homemade today. And some really good pork, because sometimes it can be overdone. Yeah. This time, I think we got out just at the right time. And it looks pretty damn tasty. So I need stuck in. Happy days. And he's got a surprise today. Oh, oh yeah, I got a few things to talk about. First of all, apparently I've been accused of spreading hate speech. So in our last video, you'll remember if you watched it, if you haven't, what you're waiting mm. for. I talked about how in America, brothels in certain parts of America are offering sex for people who want a vaccine, who don't want the vaccine. If they go, they can get the vaccine at a jab and a shag for free. And I said... Whatever, I was just joking about it. I put it in the title, anti-vaxxers offered sex for the vaccine or something like that. Someone's come out and said, hey, yeah, anti-vaxxers is hate speech. Watch your words. God, I'm going yeah, to hell. Said, watch your words. And I just think... Isn't there enough shit going on in the world without worrying about what I say? <laughs> Seriously, how can that offend anyone? It is a phrase, anti-vaxxer. Maybe that kids. person is against the vaccine if they're actually defending the word anti-vax. Then maybe they need to go to America. You prefer Dyson, don't you? Dyson? Vax. Yeah, I do. I, prefer, <laughs> I do prefer a, um, a Dyson. Actually, I don't like Dysons. We've, I've used one. I didn't like it. I like a Henry, but we've got a Hetty. That's oh, funny. Hetty. That actually takes us into sort of when talk about when you mention Henrys. So... I don't want to steal anyone's content, so I will give them a shout, even though they're way bigger than us. You know the bloke we watch from Birmingham, Rory? I know him. Yeah, yeah, love him. His, his nickname on, not nickname, his name on TikTok is Nohun, all one word. Go check, and check him, him out, out on TikTok, brilliant. He's hilarious, a lovely bloke from Birmingham. And he puts it on there every day, and he involved his Henry Hoover, and I was like, that's a crazy story, that is. So do you know... Imagine what could be costing the NHS three hundred and fifty grand a year. Well, it's obviously a Henry Hoover now. Yeah, so, well, he used a Henry Hoover in his little TikTok video. Well, it's industrial, isn't it? A lot of like work men use it. You know, when they come round, like the Virgin Media men, or like to do something in the house, you have to have repair. They always bring in a Henry Hoover. Yeah, they do. Because a mobile like that, easy to get around. No, it's because they are an industrial Hoover. Do you reckon they're sponsored by Henry? Who? All these industrial workmen. I don't know. But either way, they are industrial, so... Yeah, but I'm not... So, it's not Henry Hoover's aim which are costing the NHS 350 grand a year. Just that Rory, no one, used one in his video to, to do a funny TikTok. So, apparently, this was in the news. He, he told the story about it, and I thought, I've got to tell you, look. People... Are they not, are they? ...are inserting items up their arses... And it's costing the NHS three hundred and fifty grand a Not year. Not the pipes. Well, he had a he had his Henry there. He was tentering up the NHS, saying, "Hello, uh, I've accidentally got my Hoover pipe stuck up my bottom." Then I was like, "You mentioned Henry." I was like, oh, "That reminded me of that." Well, it's like Karen said that one of our lovely subscribers. Somebody apparently sat on a light bulb, wasn't it? I thought it was a frying pan. Frying pan handle, or yeah, somebody got a frying pan handle at the bottom. It wasn't up the. It was a lady's. Oh, Lady Garden. 
But I mean, come on now. There's no need for it, is there? Frying pan, you've got to use that the next day for your no, fry No, but surely there's other things. I mean, if you're that desperate for that. Well, there is shops for people who just want bigger, you know, Yeah, things. a lot and summers, but you could just nip over Tesco and get a cucumber, couldn't you, really? Of course, is it I'll necessary? I'll tell you what, just... Just nip in the bloody pan cup and whip out a bloody Russell Hobbs. It's just not normal. How bored must you be, though, on a Saturday or a Sunday? I'm, you know, I'm a bit bored today. Go and grab the umbrella. You know, who the hell thinks of putting these things up the bum? And where the hell do they You're think gonna it's going to go? You're going to put something in this title to say it's a bit... Yeah, but, I mean, where do you think it's going to get you in the end? It can't feel nice. Like, one day, my bum feels too normal today. I know what we need. Grab that pencil case, I'm. Stick it all up there. Rub us oh, a lot. Okay. There's no need. Just sit down on your bum, watch a bit of TV. Bit of Emmerdale. I'm sure there's something more interesting than that than doing that stuff to yourself. Clearly not. <laughs> but yeah, I was like, that's crazy. 350 grand a year. Yet people are having the universal credit stopped everywhere now. There was all uproar about that. People are like, give me back my money, bitch. But they're not going to give you it back, apparently. You've lost it. I don't know why, but that's what they're saying. <laughs> and then we had, um, when you watch this, guys, it's already been and gone, unfortunately. We've left this a bit late to record. Uh, like the attacking on Liverpool yesterday. Oh, my God. With the taxi. But what annoyed me was Boris Johnson's on the radio just now. Is in the kitchen. He's like, yes, we want to thank, you, thank all of the emergency services. I, I'm good with that. That's fine. Yeah, d- really do thank them all. But... What about the man who locked him in his taxi and ran out and saved yeah, everyone? Yeah, a lot of people are saying he needs a like, sort of medal or something. Yeah, well, Boris ain't. He's like, thank you to the dentists. They're an emergency service. Thank you to the lollipop ladies. Not emergency service. Not thank you to the bloke who saved I'm sure a lot he of people. Has. I'm sure there's things have come out because... You know what, though? I mean, Christ. Can you imagine being that taxi driver? That is one brave man. I he? heard something that he, that he had to have his ears so back on. Well, he wouldn't have... I saw the video of it, I don't know if you Yeah, have, I have. Of him, the car pulling up, obviously it exploded, and uh, somebody running away from it, and obviously that's the taxi driver, I'm guessing, because the man who had the... He yeah, actually he wanted died. to go to the commemoration, didn't he, the Marem- Remembrance Day. Yeah. Yeah, that's where he wanted to go, but the, the guy, I think he saw explosives, or oh, he got suspicious. something... And um, he diverted it to there by saying you had to pick somebody else up. Did he? I didn't hear all that. But what a brave bloke! So if you know him, which I don't, you can't say you won't if you're watching this, but if you do, tell him we said well done, mate. That is horrific. Now to show it's still happening. Mhm. A lot of stupid stuff still happening. And now the terror alert's been put up to like severe in the UK, meaning an attack is likely anytime soon. Is what severe means. I don't mean it definitely will happen, but they've got to put all the services on alert and whatnot. Oh, it's just one thing after another, isn't it? I mean, after the couple of years we've had, even these people, don't they actually think, you know what, like... But yeah, COVID's about let's stop trying to blow people up. No, I just think is there nothing that makes anyone see any sense anymore. Well, no. Um, I mean, I've had enough of it. I don't think anyone else really wants all this hassle. Just want to enjoy Christmas. But you're not safe anymore. I was telling him yesterday, there was this bloke and he had his motorbike outside his house. This is insane. And these knobheads who pull up on the scooters and whatnot and robbing bikes and motorbikes and cars. There was a woman and her two teenage lads in the house filming these two lads. There's two lads on a scooter and two lads in front of the house. So right in front of their front window, middle of the day, people Nasty on the street. evil sods, man. And they were trying to nick this man's motorbike. And when they realised they couldn't get the motorbike off there, like the lock off the bike, they just smashed the car windows, being filmed the whole time by the family in the house. I mean, what can you do? You can't go out and say, please, go away now, leave my I'm property alone. I'm telling you alone. now, Lee, this is the thing you see for these little absolute morons doing this. One of these days, some big mother... He's going to come outside and wail you in. With any luck. But it's it like... is going to happen where someday a bloke or a woman, that, 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 I'll tell you what, you don't have to be a man, but they're going to see you and they're going to come outside and they're going to absolutely annihilate you. The thing is, it's like somebody said um, when I saw that clip, in America, 
if you do that, so, like, so they went on there at this person's property to get to the motorbike. Once you step foot on their property in America, they can, do, they can, you they can, can shoot you. Mm. And not in all parts of America, most of it. In the UK, probably right that we can't do that because everyone was saying, oh, I shot my I husband. Did. He came on the property. Obviously, for a start off, here you have to have a gun license, but shooting like hunting can't. You can't shoot you, someone. You don't have to shoot people now. I don't think you're allowed a handgun, are you? No. I'm not sure the rules on it. You're not even rules. allowed to you know, defend yourself in this country without going to prison yourself. Mm-mm. You can defend yourself if someone's trying to hurt you. No, yeah, you it can't can be defend proved. your property, I don't think. Like, you know, I mean, it's just not worth the bloody risk. But it makes me scared. I mean, like, you just can't... You can bloody people just pulling up in front of your house trying to break in the middle of the day. Not giving a crap. I'll tell you what. This is how Lee is scared. When it does happen, when he starts thinking these things, he sits up all night just making sure after what happened mm -hmm. with our home. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Not a fan of fat on pork. Unless it's rendered. Like proper rendered. Mm. Any of you guys watching MasterChef? Oh, I'm loving it at the moment. Who you, well, you've only seen one set yeah. of shows, haven't you? I love MasterChef. Also, if you joined us on the weekend, we went live on... One of the days. When Saturday. You, Saturday. What gone. a fun live. Thanks, guys. Good. We had an absolutely fabulous time. Come and join us on the weekend. Yep. Hopefully we'll be live again one of the days. It is a real fun thing what we do. We have a right laugh, don't we? I only did about an hour's worth of karaoke. <laughs> Took requests. Did? Um, I don't remember a lot after that. I forgot way too drunk. I broke a dish and come down the next one's like, what happened to the dish? She's like, you broke it. Um, didn't remember doing you that. You blame everything on to you. Well, I thought it was her. I didn't remember doing it, so there we go. It was you. He's the ball breaker culprit. I'm a ball breaker. If you're not doing your job, you're getting your balls bowl. broken. A bowl. All the same This stuffing you've made is lovely. That's good. And I will say. Let's have a look at it. This side, it's a bit crispier, and mm. I think that really makes a difference. I had to whack the heat up on the oven to get the potatoes a bit more cooked. This didn't cook very well. And sometimes Some certain don't. potatoes don't, mm. do they? Or maybe it's because I used like the juices from the pork or something, I'm not sure. Just a, a bit longer they would have done, but we're waiting long enough today. Mm. Do you know if you're a deaf worker and what you can do these days? Or to deaf school, even. I don't know if it's everywhere, but in the somewhere. I think it was in America. Somebody used the excuse of, I think it was actually in the UK, I'm suffering from climate change. It's now the new pandemic, climate change. Oh, come on. And that's what they said. They said, I've been to the doctors, and they said, I've got climate change illness or something or other. And they was able to have like a week off. I think this went on holiday to Singapore or somewhere. Mm. Um, that's a good idea, isn't it? How can you prove you're not? Yes, I'm suffering from all the exhaust fumes in the world. You could say that I've got plans today. Oh, what's that? I'm super glue my face to the M25. Yeah, I mean, you can't get the shot for that a bit because he said, I'm trying to save the world for future, you know, generations. How can you sack me? I could be saving your grandkid in 20 years' time or 30 years with my actions. I want to know what this thing is. Oh. What you ripped down on a piece of paper that I'm not allowed to look at. Oh, yeah, sir. <laughs> I've got a little thing for Aang today. Basically, we missed the Generation Tinder, or Generation T. Where's this going, mate? Well, we did, didn't we? We haven't been on Tinder. Me and you got together before it was even bloody thing, as far as I'm aware. I don't think it was around when we got together. What, you get down on a piece of paper for So I'm going to tell you now. Sign me up. It's, no, I've not signed you up to it, Cross. See you over there. So, it's a thing nowadays, apparently. If people who go on these blind dates or on a, on a dating app afterwards... Oh, you yeah. get sent a feedback a form. A review. And it's like this woman the other day wanted the bloke who she's going to date with to give her feedback like, what, you know, what was your impressions of me? Did you have fun with me? You know, did you want to get it on with me? All this sort of stuff. I mean, some of the questions were a bit like, what the hell? Yeah, it's a bit forward. Like, did we bang straight away or did we just have a laugh sort of thing? So, I thought, because me and I missed out on Generation Tinder. You know what they're calling? I don't know, I just made this... Oh. I just made it up, pain because this generation these days, they're not meeting him like we did. You well, know. It's, it's all ages on there, darling. But this I, this generation and right now, people, right this second, 
aren't meeting like me and you did, the old-fashioned way. Go on, then. They're going on a phone and press it, swiping left, right, up, down, left, right, start, and A, like an old Sonic game. Um, that used to be a cheat that did on Sonic the Hedgehog. Up, down, left, right, left, right. Start, and A. Yeah? Yeah, and they give you, like, I don't actually know what it gives. springs, or... I think so. But the old Sonic the Hedgehog or Mega Drive. Unlimited so. lives, or... <laughs> Somewhere over, yeah. Christ, how things have moved on. Mm -hmm. I used to love the Sims cheats. So you get that llama in the middle of the room and then you just have everything. That was all about oh, home, right. home improvements to me. I wasn't interested in doing... I just wanted to deck, deck out the house. On Sims? Yeah. You got me into that. So I was like, I'm... I'd throw a party because it was a Friday night. <laughs> she was playing this game with the Sims if something hadn't played it's really good. And I was like, nah, that's not for me, I'm... And then she showed me like the basic controls one night when we were sat at Mum's house on the old PlayStation Two or Three or something. It's like fifteen years ago. We was up for hours. We spent like till like, five, six in the morning. I got up for work at like half six. Like, ah, uh, I couldn't really see. So I was just seeing Sim characters rolling around my head. My head never. One of my never. That's what they talk like. Yeah, you need to like explain what it's like for anyone who's never played it. They've got their own language, haven't they? Mm. Sim language. Come on then, let's do this review. Alright, so I want you to remember back to the, our first date. Not the first time we met, we met and then we arranged to go on a date. Okay? Okay. So I want a feedback and review of our first date. Right. And I've come up with questions and categories. Okay. Okay. Now there's only four questions, because I was in the middle of like, making dinners that a lot of time. Take it away, Ernie. Actually, first off, how's your dinner? Hmm? Good stuff. Lovely. Okay. Let me get rid of this meat out of my mouth. Steady. <laughs> and that was not an innuendo, thank you. <laughs> right. Okay. Here we go. There's still some in here, so I have to put it with. Okay. So the title of this questionnaire is First Date Feedback from AIM. Okay. Well, question one. When we first met, did you A. Think, yeah, he's hot. B. Think, yeah, I can work with that. C. Ah, oh, balls. I'm going to need more wine. You can be honest and be brutally honest because. Everyone probably has heard the story about how you knew you had to change a few things. Just the shoes. But what was your answer to that? We'll it was just you had these white We'll go on to shoes. fashion after. <laughs> right. The first thing that got me about you, we obviously met in Blackpool, but yeah. the second week when we had a proper date and everything, yeah. was your humour. Yeah. <coughs> Instantly it was his humour. And yeah, I did think, oh yeah, he's hot. I did think, no. <laughs> no one's ever thought I was hot. Apart from me when I've been too warm in a, when I was abroad. If I didn't, if I wasn't attracted to you, I wouldn't be here with you right now oh. eating dinner. Thank you. Well, it depends on how much you had. <laughs> no, but seriously, yeah. At the end of the day, we've all been out with different types of guys and everything like that. I and haven't. I was a nightmare at one point. Nightmare. You like, still bloody am. No, you know what I mean? I used to be so bloody. Ooh, you got a nice hair. I was such a blooming nightmare. But, and Lee was my breath of fresh air. Really, really was. Because you just instantly. I was like, this guy makes me laugh so bad that everything's perfect. Mm. It just was. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Question two. When we met, did we? Number one. What are you going to ask you, Lee? Number one. Hit it off right away. Number two. Get jiggy with it. Number three. Go for fried chicken. Ball three. <laughs> Who in which order, eh? A, B, C. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. We got the chicken after number B. All right, Lee, let let's come on now. But we did get on all right first. We didn't just like meet up and start, you know, whatever. So, okay. Is that your section for the dogs? Yeah. What the hell? Oh, I've got no place yet. Mm. You've obviously made a dent in your plate more than I have. 
that. Yeah, because I thought we did the good stuff, Yorkshire's and roasted. Okay. See, now that's not my favourite. My favourite is sprouts and then pork. And meat. Yeah. And cabbage. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I, I can eat cabbage, as, have you, as you've seen. I mean, I might need a, a drink with it sometimes, but I can eat it. <laughs> uh, it's better than spring greens. Hmm? No, you like them. Oh, I didn't remember. Hmm. Oh, better than sprouts, Christ. Sprouts to me are just like small cabbages. Is that it? No, it was two more, yet. Yeah. And like small cabbages that smell like rotten socks that have been stuck at the bottom of your PE bag for ten years. Right. Question I three. Really when we met, did you think my dress sense was one? Oh. Classic Primark. Two. A reject from the train spotting cast. <laughs> three. A cross between Pelsman and Pat and Norman Bates. Train spotting is in the film. We are, yeah, the remember? film. Not real life train spotting. Like with the like bootleg the... jeans. Yeah. Yeah. That was more like that, was I? Then I thought I would have thought prime. What? Then again, we didn't have a prime art when I met no. you, did I? You used to have really big bell bottom jeans <laughs> and stuff. I mean, each to their own. And uh, you, right? Let's just put it out there. Let's be really. You can't tell me. There's enough men who say, "Oh, darling, can you wear that?" Look. Oh, you got to be honest, when you got your, your skinny leg jeans, you know, you th they look good. I, I improved a lot when I met, after I met you. So I used to wear glasses. That's I got nothing to do with anything. Yeah, well, I look better in my opinion about glasses. Uh, I used to have really daft hair. I don't know if I even gelled it when I met up with you, I can't remember. Well, at least I can do something with it now. I don't know what. <laughs> Can we just say I can do something with it at least. No, you know when you blow dry your hair, it looks really good. Um, but the trouble is, Lee, you don't tend to mess about with your hair a lot unless we're doing something. You wear your cap, don't you? It's hats. a lot of hassle though, we need to be fair. I mean, the thought of every day getting up and to do your hair. So you put your hat on. I know. That's why hey, I you wear a hat all day. Mind you, ain't in the cold so. It's bloody freezing out there. It's like minus two. It is a really about eleven. It's not an 11, I'm now chance. I mean, it's November 15th. Let's check it out what the weather is like. Check it out, ask Miss Google. She'll tell you. So, yeah, I used to have big old shoes, which I thought were fashionable at the time. Shirts that were, like, way too big. Like, they were in the slightest bit showing any sort no, of figure. You was really, really s small. I was then. skinny then. Like, as in, I worked while I was... Like I'm now. No, but you look better. Like you look good. Now you know what I mean. Like you, you, you should. I've filled out better now. That's for sure. Um, I mean, I don't know why I'm right. right it's ten degrees. Ten degrees. That's in here. Look. No, it's not, Lee. So this is. It's fourteen on Thursday, and then look, it gets colder you, and colder. Yeah, on the night times, the number below you're looking at, ain't. So it's six degrees tonight. Yeah, but like in the day now, look. We're not, it's already five past six, Brad. It's, um, yeah, it's seven degrees now. Today's Monday. Yeah, so it is. That's still pretty cold. Anyway, we, I've, I said to you the other day that I wouldn't mind living in Alaska. I think that'd be really cool. Mm, it's just a place. And it's, on YouTube, it's the coldest place in the world. I can't, I don't know the name. You can, the guy that saw him, and you have to be so careful, your eyelashes freeze. You get a bottle of water, or orange mm -hmm. in this case, and you go like that, and it just freezes, freezes. in the I've air. I've seen all that. Some, I don't know where. Not where I've been, I've just seen it on the TV. But you you, you literally can freeze to death. Yeah, that and scares they me actually that only, oh, crumbs. You only, they only eat meat, apparently, because that's the only thing that can stay. Mm. Not frozen. Oh, right. and do you know they have to have the cars running all night? Otherwise, the petrol will freeze. I like watching that ice road truckers. That's dead good. But scary at the same time. I thought of mm. riding across like a frozen lake. Or in like the, some of the cliff tops have to go around where it's all iced over. That'd be scary as shit. But in general, I'd like it. But I, I couldn't be bothered where you can't even go out the house without wearing like 10 layers. I want a cold place, 
but not too cold. Oh, no, it's coming indoors. Oh, God, it's lovely and warm in here. But we don't need the heating on. Like a log cabin. Yeah. Mm. But then when you step outside, not where, like, shit, my toes have turned to ice. Because that's well, not then, good for what anyone. what about, like, um, Iceland, Lapland or something? Yeah, and I also don't want to go to a place where, like, you know that ice hotel? I couldn't be doing with sitting on ice. Yeah, my cousin went there, didn't he? Yeah, I've, I've never been with him, but... Now, you know, when I've showered you, like, yeah. he, went, he went on the Norwegian cruises and... Uh, he went to this place and you go and you have to wear like a blanket or something. You go in, it's like an ice bar. And we watched ice on, hotel um, What's her name off? Uh, no, McDonald. No, the other one, the bloody master chef woman, the chef. Monica Galletti. Yeah, she does a programme. Like the world's best hotels, I think. Or something like that with this bloke. And I think they went to it, didn't they? Mm. And it's really cool. It's literally, you go in, it's all ice. There's an ice bar, there's an ice... City bedroom, a hot, it's a hotel, I mean, that is a bit odd though, isn't it? But then they only make it up once a year, don't they? For like a couple of months, yeah. Well, there's one that's there's two, but to be honest with you, I really don't know how you're supposed to sleep in them kind of conditions. Very, you'll have to wrap up a bit. Hot water bottles needed. I want to stay in that hotel where it's under the sea, you can see all the fish around you. You like it in an aquarium, but your bedroom's there. I'd get claustrophobic. You showed me, he was like, no way, the sharks. I'd be scared, show us the sharks. They're out there, Aim. They're that there video is still online, you know. Aim, I... Where uh, you'd rather be. I said, and I got I said stick... space, didn't I? No, you said under the sea. Did I? Yeah. I'll change it anyway. I've changed See? the license then. You guys heard it here first. People come for me because I was like, Aim, you're telling him what to do. Because I bloody well knew you'd want you didn't want to go I, under the sea. I've been accused of hate speech today, eh? For saying people can get sex for a jab. You're no, it com- wasn't actually that. It was about the anti-vax comment you put. <sighs> angry people everywhere you go. There's angry oh, yeah. people. But there's always someone to moan. Yeah, there's always somebody like, God, he's a pain in the arse, isn't he? I'm like, no, I'm just having a just be me. Leave me be. Question four, I'm. Eh? No, but there is like, it don't matter what you put out. Oh, yeah, there's always somebody to have a whinge or being a knobhead. No, I think they call it trolling, don't they? Yeah. Huh? But I have noticed, I mean, it might change once I say this. I'll guarantee it'll change. So our lives, we used to get a lot of knobheads on there. Uncle um, knobhead came on. Yeah, all the time. Uncle knobhead came on our lives all the time. And we just get random stuff being said. Just horrible stuff. Not even always to us, just to sometimes other subscribers who's on the live. But YouTube have brought out a new feature now, and I don't know if I put it on the other day. Where basically they're going to like monitor any uh, hate speech and hate comments, all that stuff. So it's bullying, isn't it, at the end of the yeah. day? So any negative stuff that comes through on our lives now, it seems to be blocked because the last couple we've done, we've not had anything good for us all. We've had such all. a good time on our lives. Yeah, it's been really good fun the last two, oh, the last two or three. Yeah, it really has, guys. I mean, I really recommend you come over and have a laugh with us. We have a drink together, and it's like we've just been in a big group chat, listening to music, being silly, but it's fun. Friday or Saturday night, we'll probably do it again. Oh, yeah. Right. Let's get into question four, Aim. Okay, Liam. At the end of our date, did we, number one, know it was love and was already planning for our future? (laughs) Number two, agreed to be bunk up buddies, i.e. get it on and no commitment. What do they call that? An F buddy. Friends with benefits. Yeah, I'll call it bunk up buddy. Right. Um, oil free. Let me wash this meat away. Um, wind it back. So I said bunk up buddies, uh, or better known as friends with benefits. Or number three, did you run home, have a hot shower with five bottles of industrial strength bleach? <laughs> This is an honest feedback review I need from you. I'm going to need the truth. Well, we got together. We was already planning it. We was like, I wonder what we'll be like in 15 okay, years. Okay, so, no, we didn't. Sorry. <laughs> First weekend, met in Blackpool. Second weekend, he came here to me. We stayed in a hotel. My mum was like, oh, you stay at ours. Or just... I was like, no, I need some time with just you. Yeah. At this point, we knew... We just did, didn't we? We mm-hmm. automatically knew when we've been together 15 years in January. It's been amazing and it's getting better every single day. Certain things, obviously, we all have problems with, but our relationship, I can honestly say, has been a positive, successful one. By the end of the weekend, um, 
So I'll take you through it really, really quickly. We'll be dead, dead quick. So obviously, you know all that we met in Blackpool the week before. Lee and me was on the phone continuously yeah. ever since. Up and then he was like, I'll tell you what, we'll come, come to Wolverhampton. We'll stay in a hotel from the Friday to the Sunday. No, it was Saturday to the Monday. So Lee came down to me on the Saturday. We stayed in the hotel in the town centre. Somebody didn't turn up for three hours. Left me just sitting there. It wasn't three hours, it was about an hour and a half. I was just a bit delayed anyway. I had to take care of a few things. We met up, um, got everything unpacked and whatever. Went it, ran the town, did, went for a yeah. drink, played pool. Just got into know each other even more so. Got um, some chicken. No, that, that, wasn't that the first night? That was the first night we got chicken, yeah. Okay, so Lee booked us in the hotel restaurant. restaurant. However, when we went there, it was a bit awkward, wasn't it? It'd just been us and the staff. I was a bit awkward, like ner- not nervous, but awkward around people where it's like awkward It's situations. just silences and stuff. I like it to be a fair few people, like, you know? And I thought, are they going to be all listening in? Not listening in, but, you know, I was like, come on, let's go to... Was it Chicken, chicken Cottage? Shop, yeah. Ch- chicken Cottage, it was called. And I'm telling you now, these people gave us the most chips I've ever had in my life. I <laughs> he got all his Christmases and come on once. But it wasn't the right thing to do, was it? You know, your first proper date and going. Well, you were eating them, I was eating them, so it didn't matter. So anyway, yeah. we, we did that and we had a really, really good night. Had some drinks and everything like this. Had a night in the hotel, just completely getting to know each other. Second night, second day. Went, yeah, we went rent, leave at McDonald's. In the morning, breakfast, mm. yeah. This is for the Because Lee used to be like, Lee's always had a schedule where he gets up at like early o'clock in the morning. So I was like, is there a McDonald's about? And I was like, yeah, that way. And he took a left. Well, he we paid for hotel breakfast. I didn't want to go down for it. So I was like, I'm going to eat some breakfast. She at this point was like, I'm hanging. women things in it, I think. Where like, oh, I don't want to be seen to be eating too much in front of a new bloke or whatever. So. <laughs> No. But, well, it was a bit funny. Like, uh, you know, I didn't want to go out without my mum. Yeah, that was another thing as well. I don't do that. Right and we did the whole Sunday in the hotel, the whole Sunday. And then Sunday night went out for dinner. Uh, to a restaurant. In Indian or Chinese yeah, so restaurant. I was like, okay then, let's go for an Indian. Went round, little did I know, Lee didn't eat anything back then. So it was really funny. All right. Anyway, I had a really nice oh, meal. Chicken again. Really, really nice meal. And then my family actually got involved with it. So on the Monday, we was due to leave the hotel. And then my mum got her sister, my auntie, to come round to make sure the house was... I mean, my mum is immaculate, isn't she? Like, my mum and dad's house is... She's a clean freak. She, you think Mrs. Hinch is bad? Jesus, wet meat, mum. So she was like, right, got to get everything ready. Bear in mind the hotel, cut text you out at like 10 o'clock in the morning like come on now. oh I think I paid for a little bit more so uh, stop well, I've got to cut me meat it's not to behave oh it goes through me that does guys so I was like mum we've got to come back now like it's 10 o'clock in the morning Um, the hotel's chucking you out <laughs> and um, oh, it really goes through me so anyway we had to go for breakfast somewhere and hang around the same for a couple of hours went back met my mum my mum just lovely was like, oh really nice then um, it was my turn to go and pick tea up from school. Because obviously. Um, it was your turn to pick her up. Yeah, but I'm just, what I'm saying is, like, I, on a Monday, I picked her up. Because she was with her dad on the weekend. And um, picked her up, didn't you? And you bought her some chocolate footballs. Yeah. I do. Like, you know, like you get, like, at Christmas, like, coin money. But these are little footballs. In like this neck thing, Tia, you picked her up, didn't you, with me? She's like, "Hello." She was only just turned four in the October. No, of us knew what the outside switch were. I'd never been around a kid. Tia never been around an idiot. <laughs> it was an experience. <laughs> and you hit it off together straight away, didn't you? Mm-hmm. She took to him like a duck in water. It yeah, was... duck to water. Mm. Best mate ever since. Yeah. But the moral, well, not the moral story, one thing I didn't know at the time, because I, was, I wasn't used to dating women, um, like my older women anyway, because I was 21, and I hadn't really had a lot of dating experience. Hey, older women, I'm three months older than you. Two months. That's a lot of bloody time, mate. But no, like, I, I hadn't really had a lot of experience being a man and whatnot. So, 
my previous relationship with me when I was like 18 or whatever. So we'll, we'll get together. Uh, at the time, I said, right, okay, we'll meet up and we'll go to this hotel. I didn't know the gentleman thing to do was to pay for it all. So I remember, I was thinking of this, so I was like, oh, maybe I should actually pay for the lot. I seem to remember saying, should we go yeah, out we on the home. hotel then? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm... I think I paid for the meals and stuff. I'll be brutally honest, I'm happy to pay for everything. I, I was yeah, earning way more money than you. I should have probably took you and paid for everything. Yeah, but you bought me... No, you can't say that. I don't know. I mean, at the time, in my previous yeah. relationship, so that was the general case. But however, I do agree with equal rights. Secondly, um, so we met on the Monday, and then... We ain't got much space on Monday the Monday night, you, it was due to leave, but you waited a bit longer, didn't you? Yeah. We literally planned out the next... Every weekend, for, so after work, it was me going to his on a Friday because obviously Tia was with her dad on the weekend. So I could go to Lee's Friday, come back Monday, and then I picked Tia up to school. That's how it was. And then you'd come to mine. So every three weeks, but every three weeks I was at your mum's, and every one week you come to mine, wouldn't you? Yeah, we saw each other every single weekend after that. Like it was always you, me, and your mum. Yeah, for, for seven months. Mm, it was great. And then you come down, and then we'd take Tear out, and so out of ten, lovely. what will you give that first date? That weekend, yeah. Oh, it's got to be an eleven. Oh, that's lovely. It eh? was just brilliant. It was perfect because that was the start for the rest of our life. Oh, that's really. I sweet, mean, don't though. get me wrong, guys. I ain't gonna sugarcoat any shit here. Me and Lee have been through some bad times, haven't we? You gotta yeah, be honest. Yeah, Real yeah. bad times. Well, show me a couple of years ago, fifteen years. I haven't been. Yeah, like some stupid ass times where we could have gone ballistic, and mm. we have nearly split up. But this was at the very, very sort of beginning. Wow, what years and years ago? Yeah. Now, again, we've needed to get through the rough to get to the smooth. And I can honestly say this: I'm not trying to be one of them people who are like. Do you know when you see them out on their front doorstep and they're just like, yeah, yeah, and then inside they hate each other. Me and Lee have arguments. Me and Lee sometimes could rip each other's head off. We've got arguments on here, usually. Yeah, but that's the way it is. But we are, like, hand to glove, aren't we? Yeah. Like, really good couple. We have not had one day apart. Like, one day we've not seen each other since, I don't know the actual date I moved in. It was in, like, the July, I think, in 07. No. Yeah, we've got to go in 07. No, I'm saying no, we have oh. not been, had one And we've not had a single day apart. And you know what? Really I don't want to be. No, I'd hate it. I couldn't handle being apart. I am one of them people who, you know, like yin and yang, I need that half mm. to be complete. That I, I couldn't do that. And I think if me and Lee split up, I couldn't be bothered to go through it again. No, no, but when I say apart, I mean, obviously, you know, we're away from each other, but where we, haven't, we see each other every day at least for an hour or two. Yeah. And anyway, we've got to wrap this up now because this is about to cut off. But the moral of that story is get rid of your apps for dating and get to Blackpool. <laughs> so your future husband and wife is waiting for you. Aim say goodbye because it is about to cut off, bud. Okay, bye. I mean, bye, guys. <laughs> guys, take it easy. Bye. Oh, we're off. Bye. Ladies.